Hi again, in this video we are going to look at the non-inverting amplifier. So before you watch this one, make sure you are super happy with how the inverting amplifier works, and then we're just going to apply the same principles really to look at the inverting amplifier. So again, make sure you've gone back um, and really looked over the uh, previous videos because none of this will make sense unless you've done that. So what I have drawn in front of you is the circuit diagram for the uh, non-inverting amplifier. Um, and you can see again it's slightly different to the previous one. Um, I now have V in connected to my non-inverting input. So quite an easy way of telling whether, the, whether you're dealing with an inverting or non-inverting input is if Vn, if V in is connected to the inverting input, then it's an inverting amplifier. If V in is connected to the non-inverting input, then it's a non-inverting amplifier. Quite a nice easy way of telling what's going on here. So again, let's just think about uh, some of the key facts that we need to remember in order to make sense of this. The first and most important one still goes back to this negative feedback lesson. Again, if you're not sure about it, do go back and check. You need this idea that V out will adjust itself to be whatever is necessary to make V inverting and V non-inverting equal to each other. Obviously, as always, uh, assuming that the op-amp isn't saturated, so assuming that V out isn't greater than the supply voltage. So again, what does that mean in practice for us today? Well, I'm going to give this point here, point P. And in previous times, we've uh, had one of the inputs connected to ground, which means point P has been a virtual Earth. But in this case, it's not connected to a virtual Earth. The other input is sorry. The other uh, in input is going to be my V in. So this changes things slightly. And now what I can say is that the voltage at P is equal to V in, or approximately equal to. They're going to be very very close to each other. So again, the same thing as before. Uh, the op-amp will adjust itself so that this point here, the, the potential being received at the inverting input, that should be equal to the voltage uh, being input from V in. Another thing to remember, as always, is that we assume there's infinite output resistance and there's zero, sorry, infinite input resistance and zero output resistance. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to take the same approach as we did with the inverting amplifier, and we're just going to think about the current. Assuming that current's coming out of the op-amp, where is it going to go? Well, obviously a proportion of it will leave here, but I will have a current that must flow this way. And it must flow in that direction because we've said that it has infinite input resistance. So no current can go up in back into the op amp because its input resistance is infinite. So I can say that I in resistor 2 is equal to I in resistor 1. And input current here is equal to current here. I'm just know I've called this R1 and R2. Sometimes they will call R2, uh, they'll call it RF as well um, because it's the resistor at the feedback, it's part of the feedback loop. I'm going to keep, keep on calling it RF, but just be aware that you may see other uh, letters or symbols or, or subscripts used for these uh, resistors. Uh, make sure you just look at the diagram and you can be clear what we're talking about. Okay. So we're going to use exactly the same tricks as we did in the previous lesson, and we're going to think about the potential drop across R2 to start with. Now, across R2, I can say the potential drop will be V out minus V in, because I've already said that the potential here must be V in. The op-amp op op will do whatever is necessary in order to make that happen. And again, using Ohm's law, which is V is IR, I can say that that potential drop is equal to the current multiplied by R2. I'm just going to use I for the current because, as I've said, the current in R1 and the current in R2 is the same, so we're just going to call it I. Across R1, I can say that the potential drop is V in take away zero because the other side is connected to ground here, so it's dropping down 
to zero. So it's just v in. And I can say that, that v in is equal to the current running through it times r1. So I've now got these two equations. v out minus v in is equal to i times r2 and v in is equal to i times r1. Now, depending on your level of confidence with maths, you may be able to straight away solve this one, but I'm going to go through it simply for you as well. Uh, clearly, r is something that, sorry, not r, i is something that I'm not really interested in. i may change depending on the output, um, and it's kind of irrelevant. So we're going to try and get rid of it. Um, and to do that, I'm going to say that i is equal to v in divided by r1. And then I'm going to substitute it into this equation. So I can say v out minus v in is equal to v in over r1 multiplied by r2. Now at this point I'm going to use the same trick that I did earlier and I'm going to see that there's a common factor here. So I can say v out is equal to v in over r1 multiplied by r2 plus v in and now I've got this common factor of v in so I can say v out is equal to v in multiplied by r2 over r1 plus 1 um, and then if I want to then rearrange that to find the gain, which is v out over v in, then that just becomes r2 over r1 plus 1. And that is the equation for the gain of a non-inverting amplifier. Hopefully you can see that this is one that will be non-inverting because I've got no negative signs in here. Um, I haven't taken the uh, negative of the uh, input voltage. If I put in a positive input voltage I will get a positive output voltage. If I put in a negative input voltage I will get a negative output voltage. Uh, you also notice this plus one here. That's really important to take account of that uh, when you're calculating the ratio of your two resistors you need to remember that you will always add one to it. Um, and this is quite important because if you think about the inverting amplifier, I'll just skip back in my slides a bit, um, the equation for the inverting amplifier is RF over R in. So that means that if you make RF larger than R in, sorry, smaller than R in, you can have less than one as your gain. So you can have a, a below one gain. Um, and that may be important for applications where, let's say, you have a large input voltage, um, but you want a larger current out. So you want to reduce the voltage and increase the current. Um, then there are a couple of other niche practices where that might be important. You can't do that with a non-inverting amplifier. Because of this plus one, the output voltage can only ever be the same or large, the same as or larger than the uh, input voltage. Um, so this is one of the things that when we go on to uh, some of the work that we'll do in class, looking at the differences between them and comparing and contrasting these amplifiers, um, that's just something to be aware of, that the, the uh, minimum gain of one of these is always going to be one. Okay, well I hope that all made sense to you. Uh, you have, uh, so okay, I'll give you some work to do during the lesson about this, um, but if there's anything that you are unsure of, please make sure that you go back uh, and just review it before you see me, um, or put a question in at the end of this video.